Have you ever had one of those moments where, one of those aha moments where you have an epiphany and an idea just pops into your head out of nowhere? <laughs> I had one of those moments a few days ago and I was watching one of Patrick's videos on making a rubber stamp on the laser makers realm and well what really happened was the phone rang and I reached over to grab my phone right down here is my microphone right next to that is my phone stand and I reached down to grab my telephone I hit the microphone stand and on that stand was something that just gave me one of those aha moments I'm gonna share that with you today let's get started all right so while I'm watching the video uh, it inspired me to make some rubber stamps I haven't done them in a really long time probably two years uh, I only did them once but I made like 50 rubber stamps and it was for my grandchild and it was a whole bunch of little figures you know that they could rubber stamp the ink onto paper and stuff like that uh, it was you know like uh, cartoon characters and it was a whole set of 50 and I made the box and everything and that's the only time I've ever done it. So watching the video last week uh, inspired me to do it again. And I know it can be done on a diode laser, even though Patrick did it on the fiber and most people do it on the CO2. Guess what? It comes out just as good on the diode laser, which, which uh, you know, really shocked me. The first time I did it, I did do it on the CO2. So um, we're going to jump over into the shop today. And I'm going to show you the, the videos of cutting it out. And then I'm going to talk about the epiphany that I had uh, while I was answering the phone. And I'll show you a picture of my microphone and you'll completely understand why I came up with a whole new way to make a rubber stamp. And I'm putting that in air quotes for a reason that you'll find out a little later on in the video. But it's going to make life so simple and it's going to make this so easy to do. This one little trick that I discovered, you're going to say, wow, that's a great idea. Or at least I hope you will anyway. <laughs> so let's jump over into the shop and get started. This is the uh, rubber version here. And I used a gray rubber and I'm speeding this video up here. I did some testing on it to find out what the proper setting would be for the right depth and the cutting. This is my very first attempt at an actual stamp and just a, a, a quick video of the process here. This is the uh, final result of my first attempt. Actually, it's the second attempt. The first one I did where I had done some cut tests, so. <laughs> That one was, uh, I didn't put it in the right position, but this one was in the right position. This was my first real attempt at it uh, of the rubber. And my goal here was to get as much of the top layer of the rubber off as possible. And this particular uh, brand of rubber, laser safe rubber, um, has like two layers, a bottom layer and the top layer. And the top layer is the one you want to engrave out. And it did uh, a really fine job. I was kind of shocked at how well this came out. And um, now I'm just getting uh, finishing up, getting ready to um, put the little stamp part on the back so I glue it on. Now, I bought some of these uh, cabinet knobs <laughs> off of Amazon. Uh, they were cheap enough, just a couple of dollars for uh, a whole package of them. And all I'm doing here is just putting a little bit of CA glue on here. I actually I put way too much. Um, and I'm just going to drop that rubber stamp right on top of there. And make sure that it is in the right position or thereabouts. Uh, you want to make sure that you're able to get pressure from the whole stamp. And that one thing that I don't particularly like about rubber stamps is that uh, you know you got to kind of rock them back and forth to get them to print properly but um, this was a pretty easy setup and all I did was use a little CA glue and put it on top there all right now I'm getting ready to use it for the first time and uh, first thing that I wanted to do was put a 
couple marks on it so that I can tell um, which side uh, is the top and also when it's you know square on the page so uh, I went ahead and put these little lines on here and I did learn a lesson uh, using these knobs that you'll see in a minute so I just wrote top over here I couldn't get my pen to write on here but uh, that's beside the point I could have just made a mark like with a little arrow or something but I'm um, here I am getting started for with the first actual stamp and this is where I learned the lesson and I couldn't quite figure out why the bottom part of the stamp wasn't stamping properly uh, everything else stamped pretty decent except for that bottom part of the stamp I tried rocking it around you see that just distorted it uh, because the rubber actually moves and I stamped it and stamped it and then found out that these rubber pull knobs are not perfectly flat so I did wind up making another one with and sanding the knob down all right so now that we're finished with the rubber stamp let's talk about the rubber stamp <laughs> let me tell, show you the the discovery I made by accident and I, I don't know maybe lots of people know how to do this already but here it is right there right there on the screen you're gonna see my discovery that's a photograph of my microphone and you'll see on the microphone I've got my business card coin mounted to it and I looked at it and I said oh my goodness that looks exactly like a rubber stamp and I said to myself yeah I've got to do that I'm gonna make a rubber stamp you know out of wood so that's the big discovery so uh, let's jump back over to the laser lab again and let me show you how I did this on wood. We'll do a quick wood video. I'll show you a comparison, the rubber stamp to the wood stamp, and then you can uh, make up your own mind if you want to give this a try or not. So uh, let's jump back to, to the laser lab again. I've changed it from the laser shop to laser lab. I have to remember that. <laughs> but here we go. Let's go next door. Now, moving on to the wood, um, I just dropped a scrap piece of plywood that I had from another job uh, onto the Lasermatic 10, and I set the layer speeds, in case you're interested, at 3,000 speed, 75 power, that's millimeters per minute, and ran the job. I did wind up running a second pass on it because it didn't go deep enough, and I forgot to check off the crosshatch. <laughs> like I do my coins so um, it did not wind up coming out right on the first pass I ran a second pass and it came out just perfect going back to the rubber real quick uh, the rubber was slightly different because it would not cut any more than two millimeters deep so uh, I had to the the line that I used to cut it out wouldn't cut so I wound up offsetting that line by a half a millimeter and putting it into offset fill and it cut right through so <laughs> I don't ask me why uh, I really don't know but it just would not cut any deeper than uh, two millimeters so uh, that's what I did to to fix that but anyhow so um, now I'll go back into live time and show you the uh, actual results from the two passes which should have been one and the wood this is three millimeter wood and uh, came out really really good I put a very light sanding on it really light 320 grit and this is an image of after the 320 grit and then I wound up doing a, a 400 on it as well just to get ready rid of any edges or whatnot so there is the wood wood stamp I'm not gonna call it rubber stamp <laughs> So now I'm in the middle of my second attempt at this. I took that that uh, door pull and I sanded it down some. And I didn't quite get it perfectly flat because I'm, I was sanding it by hand. I should have used a machine, but I didn't want to break the machine out. And uh, now I'm figuring out that I can get a pretty decent stamp from this if I apply pressure to all four sides, which I didn't really do here. I got maybe three sides. But, uh, you know, if you put pressure on it and then just kind of rock it back and forth, up and down, you get a halfway decent stamp. 
out of this. So it turned out uh, better than I thought it would. And again, this is the first try, lessons learned. So, um, you know, that's really not bad for the first try at this. Uh, at least I think so. All right, folks, so there, that's about it. So here you've got your, your rubber stamp, okay? And I've, here I've got my wood stamp. Just just a, an amazing discovery by mistake. And here I've got my other wood stamp, which, of course, you don't want it to, you know, you want the wood to cover the entire surface on here. This was just, I just needed something to attach it so I could stamp it. Um, and I wound up having to put pressure on both sides to get it to stamp decently because it was only it was putting too much pressure on the middle and not enough on the edges so you don't want to do that but um, I think that the wood stamp stamps just as good as the rubber stamp does if not better because when you press down on it the rubber can't move and on the rubber stamp it can but on the wood stamp it can't so these letters can't distort and um, I think this is a better way to go if you're going to be doing rubber stamps and then I discovered something afterwards is you stamp it a few times in the inker or ink it I should say a couple of times in the inker and let that dry and this way you don't you know you don't get uh, all and of course put a quick sanding on it once it's done very light sanding with like a 320 grit sandpaper then ink it a couple of times and let it dry and then you've got a nice surface that will stamp just as good or better than the rubber stamp. If you put too much pressure on a rubber stamp, it distorts. If you put too much pressure on this, nothing happens. So just make sure you make your handle the same size as the wood if you're going to do a rectangle like this or a square or whatever. These little things are just pull knobs for kitchen cabinets. That uh, I got a bunch of them pretty cheap off of Amazon. And, you know, they, they sort of work for the job that you're doing here but the difference on the uh, between the co2 and the diode as compared to the fiber is that you can't make super small uh, rubber stamps like Patrick did in his video because you got to have that surface area and the size of the, your focal point is huge compared to the fiber laser so the fiber laser you'll be able to make really super small ones like patrick did but um for a normal rubber stamp hey how can you go wrong with something like this that you can do these all day long out of scrap wood if you're so inclined i'm not a rubber stamp person uh, you know uh, if something has to be approved it's just as easy to write approved <laughs> on the paper as it is to rubber stamp it but some people love rubber stamps and kids absolutely love them so you know you can make like all kinds of cartoon characters and stuff like that I will put a download link below the video where you can get some sample files to play with and test this out and see if you like it um, you know, I've, I've put together a whole bunch of the most common rubber stamps that are out there on the market and I've done the graphics on them and I've reversed them and everything else and put that link down below the video. So click on show more below the video and when you do that you'll see a link to the direct download where you can get the template and I've got the Lightburn art template, art library template, I've got the SVG, the AI, and the DXF files. So whatever laser that you're using, it doesn't matter. Whatever software you're using, there'll be a file down there for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. I did have a lot of fun making this video and creating these rubber stamps. I hope you do too. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.